Are you and your team struggling to use Slack? Well, I can guarantee you, you're making at least some of the seven most common mistakes that I've seen world-class teams make, but absolutely sabotage their way they use Slack. And if you fix just some of these seven mistakes, you'll be able to transform your way you communicate and take your Slack game to the next level. And especially look out for number six, because I've seen companies lose tens of thousands of dollars by making this mistake and not even realizing it. Mistake number one, not being all in. And this is a common one because companies oftentimes switch to Slack, but keep some of their communication on email, maybe on WhatsApp, maybe on Telegram. And what ends up happening is you never end up having a source of truth where people can get their information from. You wanna make sure that if you're using Slack, you get your entire team transi to transition and use Slack for all of their communication. Whether that's communication with clients or communication with the team, you wanna make sure that everyone's all in, we're using Slack for our communication, and that is the way that the team is progressing. Mistake number two, not having a proper channel structure. What ends up happening is people start creating channels all over their Slack workspace, and people oftentimes get lost on where they can find information about projects they're working on. So they don't have separate client channels, they don't have separate department channels, they sort of create channels ad hoc, really don't have no naming convention or structure convention. So what you want to do is clearly separate, all right, these are our client channels, you know, we have our external and internal channels. These are going to be our department channels and where we're going to talk about, you know, our internal projects here, we're going to be talking about our topics. And then maybe if you have vendors, you're going to have vendor channels where you're going to be conversing with them. You want to make sure there's a predefined structure and naming convention for all the ch channels in your workspace. And by making sure that happens, you can actually mitigate the amount of time people spend on trying to find the right information and just overall have the entire communication be way more structured. Mistake number three, not setting up notifications properly. What ends up happening is people use Slack and they just get bombarded with notifications throughout their day and probably 90% of them don't even have to do with the person that's reading them. So what you want to do is make sure that you set up your not notification settings to only notify you when you get either a direct message, a direct mention, meaning someone in the channel actually tags you and asks for something directly from you, or when someone replies to a, me a message of yours in a thread. This way, you're gonna remove 80 to 90% of all notifications that you normally get on Slack, and this is gonna make sure that you only get to read and interact with the messages that have to do with you. I've seen people do this and absolutely start loving Slack because one of the most common reasons people actually hate Slack is just the amount of notifications they get throughout their day and this disrupts their deep work. So make sure to set up your Slack notifications in such a way that you're only getting what's required out of you and so you're not reading 90% of the junk that actually doesn't have nothing to do with you. If you found yourself in any of these mistakes thus far, I run OpsKings, an operations and automations company that helps businesses streamline their operations and automate their fulfillment. And I've helped companies integrate Slack in their businesses and if you want help with this, you can book a call with us in the description below. This is a common one, and I see people do this all the time in Slack channels. They ask a question, they start a, a conversation about something, and they just end up having a 50 message thread for one single question that could have been resolved in a span of two minutes had the person just hopped on a call with the person and actually get everything done. So what you can do to just simply uh, fix this, number one is not have super long conversations on Slack. If you see that a thread is going outside of what's normal and you know you start getting into the tens and the 20, 30, 40 message threads, might as well hop on a huddle with a person or you can use an integration slash Zoom and actually get on a Zoom call with a person right there and there. And then within two, three minutes, you're most likely gonna resolve the entire thing. And then you can just send a quick recap in the channel. This way you're gonna avoid number one, spamming all of the channels with a bunch of different messages and notifications that only you and the person that's conversing are gonna see, and you're gonna get the problem solved way, way, way faster. So mistake you wanna avoid is having these super long threaded conversations and just get on a call and get them resolved. 
Mistake number five, not using Slack integrations. So Slack has this great thing that they have a marketplace with over a thousand different integrations with the most common tools that people use, whether that's a project management tool, a scheduling tool, a calendar, you can pretty much guarantee that Slack's gonna have a first party integration with that app. So uh, if you have a project management tool like ClickUp, Monday, or Airtable, you can set up a really quick integration with Slack and start automating a lot of the notifications. You can start automating the creation of tasks, assigning tasks to people, and do all of that through Slack. So when someone's tasks go, goes overdue, you can send them a notification directly in Slack. And it doesn't really take that much time to set these up, and they make a big difference uh, in the speed of people getting things done within your organization. So uh, avoid the mistake of not setting up integrations within your Slack workspace. Mistake number six, using Slack as a project management tool. And this kind of builds up on the previous point when people don't use project management tools and don't use integrations, they kind of organically start using Slack as its own project management tool. And Slack, even though if it's a great communications tool, probably the best one, uh, it's not built to be a project management tool. And I've seen the mistake happen over and over again with companies using Slack you know, to assign stuff to people let them know, hey, you need to do this by then. And what ends up happening is channels get missed, messages get lost, and clients end up leaving. And this ends up costing companies tens of thousands of dollars because someone misused or skipped a message or didn't read a message in Slack. Project management tools exist for a reason and make sure to actually use them. You can integrate them with Slack to automate a lot of the notifications, but don't make the mistake of using Slack as its own project management tool. It's a costly mistake. I've seen it plenty of times and trust me, you don't wanna do any of that. Mistake number seven, not keeping your Slack organized. This is one of the most common ones that people end up hating Slack for is they just get a bunch of channels, they get a bunch of messages, and they just can't seem to organize their way around Slack. A couple of cool strategies you can set up to mitigate this and actually get your team to love this is you can start using the sidebar sections to organize all of your channels. It's super simple. You can edit your sidebar and add sections for your internal projects, for your clients, channels for your team channels and really start to make some sense about you know which channels should be where and this will overall keep a much nicer look and keep everything organized within your slack workspace other things that you can do is start archiving all of the channels that are no longer being used so people you know have this tendency ad hoc to create a bunch of channels that they end up not using and then six months down the line they have dozens of channels that are not being used anymore that are just clogging up their sidebar section you have this option in Slack to actually archive a channel um, where you keep all of the data and all of the messages from the channel, but it's no longer going to appear in anywhere, anyone's sidebar. So you can just archive a bunch of channels that you're no longer using and clean up your entire workspace. And then just simple things. You know, people like to have things be unread so they don't see a bunch of white channels on the left side. What you can do is actually read through the messages and then save them for later by using the later feature. Uh, and actually start to create yourself a to-do list that even though you read something, you might want to save it for later so you can give a reply or you know, there's a certain task that needs to get done. So there's these couple of things that you can do to keep your Slack organized. And if you want to figure out how to do that or get your team to figure out how to do that, you can watch this video that I made just on that topic on how you can use Slack as a pro and keep everything nicely and organized. Being organized on Slack is very important, but even more is being organized in your your backend operations. And there's no better tool than Airtable to do that. And if you want to learn how you can do project management inside Airtable, you can watch this video.